Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. We've done an introduction video, and we did a video of uh, not quite lesson one, and we, we, we have to talk about that a touch here. We'll call that video one. We have an introduction video, then we have video one. This will be video two. Now the reason for that, changing it from the word lesson, is if we scroll down into Zim School right here, and we're at zimjs.com, we scroll down to Zim School, you'll see that these are big lessons. There's lesson one already, lesson two, and we're not on lesson two yet, so uh, we won't call our videos lessons. We'll call them video one, video two, video three, video four, and those are all part of lesson one. Then video five, video six, video seven, video eight, they're part of lesson two, that kind of thing. Sound good? So if we pop into lesson one, we're working with uh, things like classes. These are display objects. So how do we make an object from a class? We've got objects. And you're always welcome to come to Zim School and take a look at the documentation that we have here with regards to that, or the le uh, well, I guess the lesson, the references, uh, what have you. OK, but I don't want to come in here and start reading things. That'll be up to you to keep up with. I'm not going to assign you homework, <laughs> those types of things. You can do it if you want. But just be known, it's here all explained. However, I would like to have our lessons follow roughly the same thing. So in the videos, or our videos follow the same lesson sort of structure. So we'll be talking about scope eventually. Uh, we've already talked about statements. And uh, you can come here and refer to this. We talked about expressions in the first one, operators. We didn't call it an identifier yet, so that's the identifier there. The, uh, we are using the keyword const now instead of var. And we talked about the terminator. Isn't that fun? But you see, here's a diagram of all that. So you're welcome to come into these, and we'll have to talk about dot syntax and chaining and so forth coming up. There's also practice areas here to make the shapes and transformations and components. And we'll be seeing hopefully some of those today in this video. <laughs> OK, so does that sound good? Let's then move into some code. Now, in terms of code, just a refresher, we went to the zimjs.com site. We hit code here, and we hit copy. And that copied our template. And we had been going over um, stuff about our template. As a matter of fact, the very fir first, or the first video, not the introduction video, but the first video are on the lessons. If we scroll on down into the school again, the bit about the template isn't even in here because when you go to do one of those lessons, whop, 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 here we are under shapes. The template isn't even here. You just type directly in. The template is here in behind but you're, we're not seeing it. So we didn't even introduce the template in lesson one. However, I think it's a good idea for you out there to learn about the template right away. So that was a little bit of a, uh, not a diversion, but something different. And here is where in lesson seven, templates and building, where we set the students out in the wild saying, hey, you'll probably uh, want a template. You can't just keep on coding here in Zim school. Well, for the beginning, the folks were coding right here in Zoom School. We, however, are starting off with a template, so you can start coding out in the wild as soon as you want. Sound good? All right, let's take a look back at that template then. We'll open up Atom. The other thing that we did the last time was found Atom, an editor for us. And we are storing this in Lesson 01, and I suppose that's all right. We can continue working in the Lesson 01 file until Lesson 1 is over. And then in theory, we can start up Lesson 02 and start coding in that until Lesson 02 is over. Sound good? Woohoo! All right. <clears throat> so we were taking a look at the template, and we got to the point where we had a frame. This is a frame class. A class is what we make objects from, and we'll see a bunch of objects today. Uh, this frame class, when it's ready, we call this function, and we do all this stuff. Now, we bypassed what that is, and the reason we bypassed what that is is because uh, that's under lesson three or four or something like that. That's later on. And right now, I don't want to get into those complexities. We'll definitely learn how to make our own functions. But before we do, uh, 
I would rather just see some things. So that's how we're teaching this. We want to see some things first and we'll manipulate those things in nice easy ways. That's called setting their properties. And once we get used to that, then we'll start working on our own functions. When we do work on our own functions, that moves into harder things like logic and flow. And also, um, we've got a lot of things already made for us. Let's see those first, and then we'll work on how to make our own things. Sound good? Okay, so here we are. Just be known that when the frame is ready, when it makes our canvas tag for us and our stage, then uh, we're ready to start coding. So really, we're getting down into here. Uh, look, put your code here. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Well, let's just get by these first little bits here, though, and find out what those are all about. So, Zog. Zog is not pure JavaScript. Did you have a guess at that? Do you think JavaScript would call something Zog? Sounds like it comes from caveman language. <laughs> well, uh, we're in Zim, and Zim uh, starts with a Z. I don't know if you noticed that. And so we have a few short little methods, or if, uh, this one's a global function, there's a few short functions that, are, um, that start with a Z. This stands for log. So JavaScript, pure JavaScript, does have a way to log to the console. It looks like this, console.log. And then we put hi there and a semicolon. So we have just coded uh, a statement, a line of code there that says, please log to the console the word hi. So as it says here in the comment, Note that the comments can also start after a statement, like so, uh, or you can put them on their own lines, like so. <clears throat> this says logs in the console and F12 to choose console. And now F12, when we're right here, won't show you anything. I perhaps neglected to tell you that you should be in the browser looking at the results of this code and in the browser you F12, but hopefully we'll figure that out. If we F12 right now, like I said, nothing happens. So what we want to do is we want to run our code and we also want to save it. See the little blue dot up here? So I've typed in console.log, something changed. With the blue dot's there. I go control S, the blue dot's gone. Now I can right click and open in browser, right there, open in browser. So this opens it up in the browser, just reducing it down there. That's what we have. Now, hmm, we don't see anything yet. Where is this console? Well, when we're in the browser, if we press F12, then up comes the console. Now, the very first time you get the console up, it might start with, say, the inspector, like that. Well, you find the console. And this will be different, slightly different in different browsers. You may be in Safari or it might be in Chrome. This is Firefox. It, Chrome and Firefox are very, very similar. You can also find it from the menu at the top right. Uh, this is web developer menu. I think in Chrome it's something like, I don't know, other menus or something. And then you can find the web developer. So you want to look for your console and look, there's the word hi. So let's bring that up if I can. What happened to my scrolling bigger and smaller? Didn't seem to work. Uh, uh, uh. My scroll wheel's not working for me. Okay. Uh, oh, control plus plus. I mean, scroll wheel doesn't work in this, but the control pluses do. All right, so uh, there is the console. And what this is, is as we code, we can log to the console and find out what our code is doing. It helps us debug things, find out problems, find out where we are in our code. And as a matter of fact, this is how a lot of people learn JavaScript, is they'll end up uh, just logging things to the console. And that's all, that all they do. At our school, when people learn Java, they uh, spend one or two years only looking at a console. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. So um, we will look at the console on occasion, but what we'd rather see is the results right here on the screen where we can, 
or they're colorful and different and varied, not just text or numbers. All right, so anyway, we did get our high and note it says what line it's on. We also have a ready from Zim frame. And there's also a Zim frame, which seems to be logged from Zim itself. Okay, so if we come back to our code then, here's the console.log of high which is JavaScript. So this would be considered vanilla JavaScript. It comes with the JavaScript language without any changes. And what we've done, we got tired of typing console.log and poor Java, they've got something like sysdoutlineprint or something. Well, in Flash, we had trace, I believe. Oh, almost forgot. In uh, PHP, we've got echo. <laughs> Many places might have print, all these very short things, and we get console.log. And it's just like, are you kidding me? I don't want to type console.log all the time. So what we did is we made a wrapper function, a little short function that does console.log. So we don't have to type that all the time. And we'll leave that commented out. Here it is, zog for log. And that's what we're zogging this string. And you can also zog a number. Actually, you can zog an object as well, any object. Like you could zog the frame and it would tell us what it thinks <clears throat> frame is. And so forth. All right. There we are zogging. Now we come on down here. And hmm, what could this be? Frame.stage, frame.width, frame.height. Hmm, okay, well, we know what the frame is. The frame is a reference to this object that we made. So we made that object from the frame class and stored it in the constant frame. That means that this frame object will never change. I mean, the object itself can change in certain ways, but the, the specific object that is stored there is still the same object, even though we might change some of its properties. All right, so speaking of properties, that's what these are. The width and the height of something is a property. And that's what we would say in our language too, isn't it? You know, we have property. Properties are things that something has. Your eye color is your property of your eye. In fact, the eye is a property of you. <laughs> so here, the width and the height is a property of the frame. And so is the stage. The stage is a reference to where we need to add things. If we want to remember that stage, uh, the stage, we, if we want to circle and we want to see that circle, we have to add it to the stage. And we're about to, we're about to get there. So this is a little bit lengthy, frame.stage. And we have, we have to use this quite a lot, frame.width, frame.height, blah, blah, blah. So what we've done is we've just shortened it. So because these are very popular, common to use, we've shortened them a little bit by putting them into their own short little names. As a matter of fact, for a long time, I just called that SW and SH for stage width, stage height. But as soon as I started teaching, it was sort of like, well, okay, you guys might not know what that means. I'll spell it out a little bit for you, but I did not spell it out in full width. <laughs> okay, but uh, so that's what we've got. We've got stage, stage W and stage H, and we choose these names. Now the stage is never going to change. It will always remain the same stage, so we've made it constant. The stage width and stage height actually may change. If we have, uh, they, they don't change in the fit mode. So if we're in fit, which is what we're in now, they'll always stay the same. But if we're in full mode, the stage width and state, stage height values actually change. So rather than have to fix that later, we just said, hey, let's use let for the stage width and the stage height because uh, maybe they'll change depending on the mode. I mean, in this case, if we're using the fit mode, it won't change, but whatever, no big deal. In the past, I had mentioned, in the past, you'll see many examples out there that have var for all of these, var, var, var. That's just the last version of JavaScript. It still works. We can still use var, no problem at all. But we're trying to move into ES6 or version six of JavaScript. ES stands for ECMAScript. So we're now on version six of JavaScript and we're using consts and lets. Good. Now later on, whenever we want to do something, for instance, at the bottom of the template here, we have a stage.update. Well, we don't have to go frame.stage.update. 
because we've stored it in a const up here called stage. Good. All right. Now there's a few comments here saying that you can look at the Zim Learn, you can check out the docs. That's another thing. How do you know what these things are? Well, we've got documentation, and the documentation is what tells us what those are. Sometimes I don't even remember. There's so many of these things. And those things are called pr parameters. Uh, actually, we're passing in arguments, but uh, more on that soon. Okay, there's so many of those things that uh, I have to look up in the docs as well. Hey, and I wrote the docs. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so there's a link to the docs, and there's also a link to this thing called bits. Let's bring that up a bit. Bits, speaking of bits. And those are 64 interactive media techniques, so things that we do quite often. How do we get shapes on the stage? How do we drag something and snap it into place? How do we animate something? How do we do this? How do we do that? And there's 64 of them. And they're very short, and you can read the code in behind them as well. All right, but those are just a bunch of reference links. Here, put your code here. You can delete this sample code. So indeed, this stuff right here, right to the stage.update, is just some sample code. So let's delete it and start afresh. Woohoo! We'll recreate it here. Probably that will do us for today's video as well as just getting started on that. We've um, just uh, finished off talking about what's in the template or what the template is. And now let's put something in here. All right. So if we want to make a display object, a display object is something that we see. Display object is something we see. Is something we see on stage. Or if, if we add it to the stage, we'll see it. So let's try one. Do you want to make a button? <laughs> that would look like this. Now the button is made from a button class. And then we've got a slider, and the slider is made from a slider class. And we've got a rectangle, and the rectangle is made from a rectangle class, etc. So uh, or we've got a rectangle class, and if we want a rectangle object, we make it from the rectangle class. So let's try a button. You ready? New button. And there we go. So this makes a new button from the button class. So my question to you is, what is that? If you said it's a class, then you're not quite right. The class is somewhere else. The class is inside of Zim. This, when we say new button, is a button object. Got that? That right there is the button object. It's made from a button class, and this is how we access the button class. It's stored on Zim, like I said, and we use these round brackets to say, please execute this button class and make a new button. So there's our button. If we want to see it, well, let's save this. Uh, we'll end our statement. Let's save this and see if we see our button. Do you think we will? Have I opened this up in a browser yet? There it is. I refresh. Hmm. No button. No button here. No button there. Matter of fact, we don't need that open. So no button. Darn. Well, it did make a button object, but we have not added it to the stage. And that's kind of handy. It's good and it's bad. Sometimes you forget to add it to the stage, then it's bad. But it's good because we can make the button. We can do things to it. We can get it ready. Hey, I'm going to get you all ready. Oh, you look great. And then I'm going to put it on the stage. And also, uh, sometime later, we can take it off the stage if we don't want to see it. And that button will still exist, but we've just removed it from the stage. So you see how that can be handy? All right, let's add it to the stage. Now, the, the basic way to add something to the stage is dot add to, like that. Uh, it's not the most pleasant thing because add to will put it at a position. It won't change the X and Y position of it. See, when we put things on the stage, we can also specify where we want to put it. And this just adds it to the stage without saying where we want to put it. Let's see where it will put it. <laughs> you ready? We refresh. Mm, there it is. It made the button for us. 
but it just put it at a place called zero zero. So surprisingly, this is zero zero. This way down here is not zero zero. So sometimes uh, back in, I don't know, mathematics in high school, you may have found out, or even in grade school, that this is zero zero down here, and that's y going positive, and this is x going positive. Well, that's not how it works here on the stage, uh, or in basically most interactive media. What we do is we're starting up at the top left corner. It's almost like, hey, this is zero, and as, as we go down, that's actually positive, and then y going across is positive, or sorry, x going across is positive. All right, so that could take you some getting used to. So that's an add to. Okay, uh, we've also got a loc, which stands for location. And we can say loc at 100, 100. If we don't say where, then it will assume we mean on the stage. But more on that later. So loc at 100, 100. Hey, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Now it's at 100, 100. There happens to be a little handy thing, it's called grid. I'll just put it here quickly since we're talking about it. New grid, like that, and uh, okay, the new grid will show up as percentage to start because usually when we're using a grid, we're worried about positioning something that is for mobile where we have to do our own scaling and then we start using percentages. Oh, move this over 20% and that's a way that we can make things more responsive. So the grid by default handles percentage. You see there's percentage, but if we hit the P key, now it turns it into pixels. And indeed, we can see that if I put my cursor in the corner here, that's 100, 100. It's 100 over and 100 down. So there you go. If I go all the way to the other corner, it's the stage width over here and the stage height is down there. Okay, so I'm removing the grid now. <laughs> Goodbye grid. Well, we'll comment it out. You can play with it if you want. All right, so we've located something at 100, 100. Uh, there's another fun one as well. And perhaps what we can do is comment that one out. We'll copy it, paste it. So in Atom, you can just sit on a line. You ready? I, I'm not even selecting this. You can sit on a line, control C, control V. You see that? There's a lot of nice things in Atom as an editor. So uh, what I was going to keep the loc there. We'll comment it out and keep the loc. But there's another one that we often use, certainly at the start here, and that is dot center. Dot center is, well, <laughs> centers it. <laughs> let's, let's take a look. So we refresh there, and sure enough, there is our button centered on the stage. Cool, huh? Now, nothing's happening when we press it, but that's interactivity, and we'll be looking at interactivity in a future lesson. Now, obviously, that's, that's very important for interactive media. All right, so a new button, center on the stage. What if we wanted to change the, uh, the button and didn't want the button to look like this? Well, we would then, tell you what, let's leave the button like this, but we'll make uh, a circle and we'll start changing the circle. The button has so many parameters in it that some of the things we want to do, uh, we'd have to do a fair bit of typing. All right, now, in the future, I'm gonna show you uh, two ways to do these things called parameters, and that makes typing it easier. But until then, <laughs> I don't want to do the parameters on the button. All right, it, it's easy enough. The, the first ones are easy. I, I don't want to scare you. Okay, if we do this 200, 200, comma, and we say, hi, hi, hit, <laughs> hi, there, width, height, and the, the button will now say hi. And we refresh here there's a big button that says hi. But then if we want to get into the color, the, the, the background color, the, the roll background color, and the corner, and, and all these other things, there's many, many options on a button, then uh, we want to wait a little bit until we get better at parameters. Okay, so we're going to comment out the button completely, and let's move to something a bit more basic, and that would be, for instance, a shape. Okay. Uh, we can say new, well, there is a generic shape like that. 
but uh, that would mean that we'd then have to draw in the shape ourselves, custom drawing, make lines and curves and that kind of thing. What we've done in Zim is made, uh, and, that, and that, by the way, the, the new shape is very much like raw canvas. It's what the canvas had. It is, hey, you can draw lines and circles. And that was sort of about it. You can put images on there, draw lines and draw circles. And other than that, you had to do a fair bit of work to make it uh, work more than that. All right, so CreateJS came along and made some of this easy, like the stage. CreateJS gives us a stage, but shapes, it didn't make it easy. Uh, they, we still have to make a new shape and draw our own custom shapes, and it was two or three lines of code each time. So Zim came along and added some conveniences, for instance, a new rectangle like that. So now we don't have to make a new shape and then go and take that shape's graphics and then draw lines from here to there, or a rectangle from here to there. We uh, can just do it like this. New rectangle. Oh, we won't see it until we say do something like dot center. Here we go. We save this, refresh, and woo, there's a rectangle on the stage. If we want to specify its width and height, we can go here. 200 comma 100 comma and pink there we go we refresh here and there it has changed to look like so nice huh now the goal of today was just talk a little bit more about uh, the things that we're building with and then get a few things on the screen and on the stage and then we'll probably give it a pause for this one and move on to two other things. So well, what else can we talk about just at the end of, of this video? How about the dot? You see how we're using that dot? That's called the dot syntax. Now uh, we can dot methods. This is a method. A method is something that does something. So here we are centering it and when it gets the two round brackets it's like a verb. It's sort of like, hey, I'm going to center this. And there's some different things that you can specify in these round brackets, like we did here. The round brackets are where we put our arguments for parameters. Now, what are parameters? What are arguments? What's the difference? In the background, this will be a little, make a little bit more sense when we make our own functions. But in the background, these things are actually created from, from functions. Uh, the class, that is. And there we collect parameters. And it would be a parameter that would be width, height, and color, for instance. We can also specify a border color. So this is a border color, a border width, five, and the corners. Shall we put make this a rounded corner, about 20? So these are all known. You we would find them in the documentation. Maybe we can look at the documentation in the next lesson. But you can find out what the parameters are in the documentation, and then we pass in values to them, our values, what we want. Those values are called arguments. So we can say passing in arguments to the parameters. Now, for most of my coding life, I didn't know that those two things were different. Now it totally makes sense. So parameters are where we collect them, and arguments are what we send in. <laughs> okay, but sometimes I may still say, oh, we're passing in parameters. But now you know the difference. We're passing in arguments to the parameters. All right, and those are kind of funny words. Maybe you're arguing, no, I want 200. <laughs> no, I want 100. <laughs> Funny, huh? Okay, so there's a new rectangle. Let's just see what, what this looks like. Let me refresh here. And there it's done our border and our corner as well. Nice, huh? Now, what was I getting at? Oh, yes, this dot syntax. Well, center, we can pass in more things too. Uh, we have to know what we can pass in there. The this parameter, the first parameter here, is what container do we want to center this on? And by default, that's the stage. So we could actually write the stage there, and we would see no difference. So if we don't put where we want to center this, or in what container do we want to center this, we'll assume the stage. However, later on, we're going to see that we can make containers that will group all these shapes and buttons together. And if we wanted to, we could center something on a container, of a certain container. So these round brackets are the place where we can tell center more things. 
So center is a method. It does something. The other thing that we can do with objects is set properties. Now, do you remember any properties anywhere? There are some. Properties. And note that we use the dot there as well. So in object-oriented code, which is what this is, we can put a little comment here. Object-oriented code, or oop. Oh, sorry. That would be ook. Oh, object oriented programming. <laughs> there we go. That is oop. And in oops, we say objects, if we can spell it, objects are made from classes and have properties and methods. There we go. So this one, frame. Frame is the object. On, what does that look like? Does it look like a property or a method? It's a method. And here we're passing in the fact that we're ready. And the second one goes all the way down here to there. And that one is the function that we call when we're ready. So sometimes that happens. <laughs> but more on that later. Remember, we're going to learn about that later. For now, you can see that we've got a dot syntax between the object, because this is the object, new rectangle, and this is the method. And the dot sits between. Nice, huh? Now, you may be used to, or not quite used to this. It's a bit unusual. Zim does well in that we don't have to say var Let's try var blob is equal to a new blob. There's a blob, for instance. So, oh, not var, right? Const. <laughs> it's my old schooling, my old school showing through. Const blob. This blob will not change. We're gonna, this is the only blob object that will be stored inside a blob. We can, however, change the shape of the blob and <laughs> color of the blob and stuff. But this is the only blob object that will be stored in blob. So const blob equals a new blob. That's one step. And then we can say blob dot, um, how about, uh, well, we'll center the blob too, but it's going to go on top of the rectangle. That's okay. So blob dot center. So now you see how we've done that in two steps. Here's a new rectangle dot center all in one step. And we didn't even put that rectangle into a, a constant, but here's a blob. And then we put it in a constant, and we can use it later. So most of the coding world does things in single steps each time. Zim does things with this thing called chaining. And we're going to see that, because we can do more than just center it. For instance, let's try something. Remember how I said if we center both these things, then we run into problems, because the blob will be on top of the rectangle. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what we want. Who knows? But what if we could center it and then move it? So dot M-O-V stands for move. What we have are these little short chainable things, like loc was one right here. Loc, move. We've got a bunch of other ones, but we'll leave that for the next lesson. How about that? Anyway, right now we will move it, though. Let's move it 200. So what this does is it centers it first, and then it moves it 200. And note that we're still chained on to what it's called chaining, dot, dot, dot. If we did this all on one line, it would look even more like a chain. But the little dots are like uh, creating a chain. We're still on the object, and we don't end the statement. We don't do that. That would be bad, because then this dot move would be an extra statement, and we, are, we, don't, we didn't put it on anything. You see what I mean? It's, there's no object here. But if we don't do that, then the object is kind of chained all the way through this in a nice special way. So we save that. Let's have a look. And then we're going to call it a day. <laughs> Did we just make it? Uh, <laughs> just made it. This is the blob right here. And blobs, by the way, are a little interactive. So we can pick that up. Uh, the rectangle is not interactive. It's just sitting there for now. Isn't that neat? The blob is kind of this cool thing that we can uh, we can do stuff like that where we've got of these Bezier handles. Okay, one blob, one rectangle. 
Okay, so I think that's good for now. Do you like that? We got some things on the stage. Even just getting a blob on the stage is so much fun, and you can <laughs> you can play with that. Uh, if you make a kid's app, just give them a blob and say, Hi, I'm a blobby. <laughs> you know, there you go. It's a kid's app. Wonderful. All right. I am Dr. Abstract. We're here at uh, Zim, and we're learning JavaScript with creative coding. We're just getting started, and a lot of the things we're doing is, is animating things like rectangles and blobs, and we're tiling rectangles to make more of them and to make art with them, and so we're on our way. That is good, and now I, I, I figured out what we're going to do. You're going to see me dancing again. Why not? Short, and we'll end with me dancing, but what we'll do is when we get to the next lesson, not the next video, but when we get to the next lesson, I'll change up that ending and we'll put something else uh, fun there to, to, to end up with. But for now, you've got this. Okay, we'll see you next time in, in video number three. Ciao.